Uh, hi guys, can you hear me? If you can, can you yes, please try it? All right. Others, can you hear me? If you can just put it on the chat, if that's okay for you. Can you guys hear me? All right. Others? You can just put it in the chat. OK. All right, then. Cool. Thank you so much, guys. So a good evening to everyone. I hope everyone is doing well. Is, are everybody's exams over, though? All your uh, engineering exams, are they over, or you guys are still going through them? They are over. So you are on a vacations now, I'm assuming. The people whose exams are over, I think most of you, your exams might be over, I guess, since it's almost mid-March. OK, all right. No, OK. You are still struggling to them. You have exams from to OK. OK, all right. You're also starting from tomorrow. That's pretty clear. No worries. All the best for people who are just going through the exams. That's all they uh, end up really well. So welcome, everybody. This is the last session for our basics of uh, AI without the hype course. I hope everyone is aware of that. And I hope uh, everyone is prepared for what is coming for today's session. So uh, Hamza ma'am is here already for today's session. So do you want to say something? Hi, thanks, Mamta. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the last session. Um, and uh, I understand some of you are still having the exams going on. So it's great that you actually came for today's session. You've taken the time out. Um, of course, today is the last session for the basics of AI without the hype course. And I hope you all have really enjoyed the journey so far. Mamta has put a lot of uh, effort into making sure that all of you get the concepts right, right? So um, just on that note, um, today being the last day, please do participate as much as you can. Um, Mamta is also trying to complete the capstone project today, OK? So this is going to be quite hands on. And uh, for all of you to also get a real life uh, exposure to um, you know, artificial intelligence, it becomes important that all of you participate. Um, on that note, I'm not going to take too much time today. But uh, just before I hand it over to Mamta, um, just on that note, uh, we definitely will continue with the um, the discord channel that we've set up for everyone okay so that's going to be our as you know is the community of practice for everyone so please actively participate in that community even after the sessions are over and i also wanted to share a few things about the community um for the benefit of those who may not have gone through all the channels okay so i'm just doing a quick presentation here i hope all of you can see um my screen are you able to see it? Let yeah, me... it's visible. OK, all right. So as you can see, uh, girls here, we've added a lot of content right, in this channel. So on the left-hand side panel, you'll find uh, all the usual areas and uh, everything related to the training sessions. All of you will have access to the YouTube channel links for the training session as well. So for those of you who couldn't attend, uh, please do go through those um, YouTube uh, links to the earlier training sessions to update yourself. And we are going to continue using this channel, OK? So the whole purpose is that even after the training is over, please be active on this channel. We are sharing a lot of important things, right? So you'll notice on the left-hand side, uh, we've created channels for jobs. And there are a lot of things which have gone in that our teams have been researching on the kind of jobs that all of can um, associate with AI. Uh, maybe some of you want to apply also can do that. We're going to add a lot of material around interview help, um, things around helping you to design your resume, your LinkedIn profile. Uh, we'll start something in uh, 
career guidance. As you can see, there's some links already added by the teams. And as and when we come across any internships that might be valuable for all of you, we'll put these links here. So it's up to you how you want to explore. Uh, beyond that, we've added some free resources, right? So AI News, we'll keep updating this with the latest in AI. Um, we have some very interesting articles around coding. Many of you are into coding as well. So what are the design principles and a little more depth about um, uh, you know what coding is about, what are the different frameworks. Uh, you'll see ebooks here. We will share a lot of nice uh, PDF books here. It's up to you to download and uh, go through as well. And of course, we'll add additional things about uh, different type of courses that are coming in that we find our team finds is very uh, could be of value to all of you. So you can jo just go and explore all of this. OK, so um, just to share, we will keep this active and we require all of you to keep participating in this channel. OK. And um, before I go um, towards the end of the session, we would really request all of you to take a minute to come on video. So Mamta and myself can at least see you all uh, before you leave for today's session. And of course, testimonials uh, matter to us. Feedback matters to us. So please take some time at the end to uh, give us some uh, valuable feedback and share your testimonials. So on that note, girls, I'm going to go on mute now. and. Um, Handing it over to Mamta. And before I go, yes, all the best to all, all of you who are still having your examinations on. OK? All right, I'll catch up later. Over to you, Mamta. Thank you so much. Uh, you forgot one more point. That is, they should use the Discord to complete homeworks also, because many uh -huh. of them uh, haven't yet submitted uh, some of the homework. So yes, you can keep using Discord for having a look at the previous homeworks given, since all of them are you know in a track over there and try to submit it whenever your exams get over. Those will just give you a self-practice, you know. So self-study is one of the most important concepts, be it uh, any topic you are learning. So let me just share my screen with you guys. Um, yeah. uh, just let me know if my screen is visible to all of you. If it is visible, then we should just start. Yes. OK, it's visible. So Rati says it's mm -hmm. visible. All right. So then let's begin. If it is visible, let's have a quick uh, storytelling for today. So we'll be talking about AI in art today. Uh, if most of you might be on Instagram, right? So we might have seen everybody posting uh, their AI created video. Have you guys seen on Instagram or maybe on Twitter or on any social media platform? Did you see any? person uh, you know posting their ai created photos or maybe some any character photos or something yeah yes so ai has been used in art since a long time actually and in recent years it has uh, you know been very famous from creating new works of art to actually analyzing existing pieces uh, the job that we did for uh, the previous one that is analyzing the already available pictures of ours so AI algorithms are changing the way we think about art. We interact with art. You know, art is something that is very vast. You can't really describe it in a few words. So when you use AI in art, it becomes a massive boon to all the artists all around the world. So if I just give you some statistics, according to a survey which was carried out by Artsea, 62% of the collectors who purchased an AI-generated art, they said they were attracted to the novelty of the technology available and the potential for innovation, like it can be innovated more. While 56% of the people appreciated the unique aesthetic qualities of the work. When AI came into picture, it was more of an innovation kind of thing. You know, you can do more with AI when it comes to art. Uh, the Art Index Art API platform, it uses ML algorithms. Now uh, that we have had a look at ML also, it uses uh, machine learning algorithms to analyze art market data and make predictions about the future value. So let's say it created a specific artwork today. So it can predict you know, uh, the future value of it, uh, how it will be valued in the future, near future. Then there's a museum in Paris. Uh, what it did was, in order to increase the interactions, in order to engage the visitors, it has created an AI-powered chatbot. I'll show you how it looks like. So it created an AI-powered chatbot uh, you know, to engage conversations about the museum collections and the history of the museum and so on. 
So this, what it does, no, it provides a more interactive and personalized experience for the visitor. So imagine going to a museum, and let's say you are not really into reading, so we won't read the history that was kept nearby, you know, any monument. So this chatbot makes it easier and more engaging for people uh, like us who might not like reading. So it will engage us in uh, sort of some conversation, and then you know that helps in attracting tourists from all over the world to that museum. So a notable example of AI in art is the project titled The Next Rembrandt. Now, this one was a very uh, amazing project on AI in art. This was created by an advertising agency. You might have heard of J. Walter Thompson. Uh, he's one of uh, the AI artists. So in collaboration with a group of data scientists, uh, uh, engineers, art historians, he created this particular model. What it did was it involved using ML algorithms to analyze Rembrandt's painting. Rembrandt was a painter like back in the his historian days. So in order to analyze Rembrandt's painting and in order to create a new artwork exactly in his style, every artist has a different style, right? So this particular ML algorithm made sure that it created a new artwork based on his style. The resulting painting, a Dutch port, uh, a portrait of 17th century Dutch woman, was created using a 3D printing, and um, it was hand printed to resemble a Rembrandt's painting. Whenever you get time, I would suggest you to Google something called as Rembrandt painting. This is just one of the pictures I have put. Uh, you can Google and have a look at his style of paintings. You know, he paints in an amazing, amazing manner. So all his paintings are worth actually you know speaking every painting speaks a different story so whenever you get time have a look at it last but not the least we were talking about that chatbot in uh, the museum of paris right its name is ai da uh, it is the robot artist uh, it actually was presented in the national met at dubai a few months back so ai da is a humanoid robot artist which was developed by the art and technology uh, research group it is named after Ada Lovis, actually, who was considered to be one of uh, the first computer programmers of the world. AI, now, what it does know, it is designed to draw and paint exactly the same thing that an artist does, but this one is a robot. So AI now, is designed to draw and paint using a robotic arm. You being engineers, you might have heard of robotic arms to a very uh, you know large extent. Robotic arms can do a wide variety of work, but nobody uh, uh, a few years back did not really think of can we use robotic arm for paintings also somebody actually thought of it and they put it into work and they put it into a humanoid robot that can create and design arts for us as an actual artist and along with robotic arms of course a range of tools were required including pencils charcoal paint brushes that it can hold so if if you get time you can also have a look at ai there was a video of uh, ai da being in the national met dubai a few months back so you can have a look uh, it actually explains things and it actually creates uh, you know the paintings and all it looks really amazing so whoever over here is interested in art you know art and craft you can actually have a look at uh, ai and art and you can actually figure out if something of this is any help to you guys because ai and art has been literally a boon to artists if we have any artist over here you might know you know how exactly it is to be an artist and any small help uh, in that artist phenomena is actually really good so let's get back uh, as discussed in the discord channel today we'll be talking about uh, two things conversational ai and robotics and by the end we'll also have a discussion about the capstone project there's a whole chapter on capstone project wherein we had a couple of them so if by using ai um, that is motion leaf i created some picture animation video yeah motion leaf yes so you have many uh, ai uh, these things um, you know app creations and video creators that is what i was saying a few days back or a couple of months back now i'm not sure i'm not sure of the timing we used to have a trend on instagram wherein everyone is sharing their images made of ai everyone looks so younger and you know so animated you might have seen uh, there was a page that showed all the Marvel characters in AI images. So you might have seen them. So that is one example of AI used in art. And yes, Rajnandini, that also Motion Leaf is also one of the apps uh, when AI is used to create any art structure. So then let's begin. 
uh, introduction to conversational AI and robotics is what we have in our bucket list for today. So before we start off, I can see a lot of new people today. So let me just uh, ask one important question before we start. Is everybody present on Discord? People who are present over here today, people who are not present on Discord, just reply with a no. And people who are present on Discord, I mean, who are a part of the Discord channel, you can just press a yes so that we can actually know if all of you guys are in the Discord channel. Is anybody over here um, is not a part of the Discord channel? Gar no, yes. Uh, because some of, okay. So let me just share the Discord link over here. So what I want you guys to do is people who are not a part of the Discord channel, no? please just click on this link. One second. I have pasted it in the chat, guys. Please just click on this link and try to join the Discord channel. Also, let me share once you have joined. Also, let me share the YouTube uh, link with you. Now, why the YouTube link? Because over here, we'll keep posting. First of all, we'll post uh, these sessions. People who have missed any of the five sessions, you'll get a recording of every session on the uh, YouTube link itself and other stuff as well. Like Hamza Ma'am told so many things to you. So we'll be posting, you know, a lot of a lot many things on YouTube. So you can just uh, click on the link, uh, get yourself subscribed, and whatever videos we post, you will just get a notification of that. Welcome, Nimala. So I hope everybody is in the Discord. Yeah, I can see you guys joining. Uh, three of you were not there. So did um, Tanjana, Nimala, and Gargi, all the three of you join? As soon as you join, just let me know. I can see one of you have joined so far. Who is Sajinaras though amongst you? Okay. One more. Cool. So I think now that we have joined, we are ready to actually proceed. So let's start off with the first topic of discussion for today. Conversational AI is what we are looking at. So uh, in the first uh, topic, we will get an introduction to the concept of uh, AI and get introduced to the well-known model of conversation AI, that is Alexa. So before we start off, conversational AI is basically two English words, right? So if we break down these two English words, we already know what AI is. Conversational. What is a conversation, guys? A simple uh, English question to you. Nothing uh, programming involved. What is a conversation? What do you understand by the word conversation? Anyone? No need to give me a proper definition. Just uh, tell it to me in your words. You can either put it in the chat or unmute yourself, whatever you wish to. So what is conversation? Communication. Communication. So in order to communicate, uh, how many minimum number of people or how many minimum number of objects do you require? Two. At two. least two. Two. So when I combine conversation with AI, what does it mean? Am I communicate? Am I, I am communicating with what? Machines, robot, Mach robot. So conversational AI might actually look like a big term, but if you break it into two smaller talk between yes, two or more people, interaction, yes. So when you actually break down conversational AI into two uh, separate words, we understand that okay, it is just basic communication between maybe me and the machine, or maybe me and more than one machine. So maybe one machine and uh, more than me, like more people. So it is just a communication between minimum uh, two things that are present over there. So what I want you to do is now I'll uh, let's assume that um, you are Alexa for a minute. OK, what I'll try to do is I'll ask you some questions. I'll uh, assume you're Alexa or Siri, whichever model you like the best. It's just that my questions are for Alexa. So if you want to reply to me in Siri format, you can. That is pretty OK. 
so i'll be asking you some quiz uh, some questions you tell me how will alexa or siri respond to them okay so let's have a quick set of questions uh, same guys i'll just put it on to our discord channel so people who have just joined no uh, let me just see this is on the left side you might see training sessions lpf i am just sending a hi over there you can just go into that channel wherein i just sent a hi in that channel if you scroll up you will see all the homeworks prior homeworks given then all uh, the discussions happening so uh, training session self is the channel wherein we'll be taking all the quizzes all right people who have just joined this is for them so let's start off with this quiz now what i want you to do is give me an appropriate response that you think alex or siri might give think of yourself as alex or siri for the next some time all right so my question number 1 to you is alexa what's the weather like today you being an alexa what would you respond to that there are around 40 people currently in uh, the 14 sorry 14 people so i want all the 14 people to give me an answer okay so alexa what's the weather like today if you are an alexa what would you respond to this question uh, we are having a conversation right so if i ask alexa what is the weather like today what would be your response come on people just being looking outside the window to check what is the weather like today because uh, exams have stressed them a lot it seems so guys what's the weather 14 alexas what's the weather like today client won't wait this much for alexa to respond client will be like okay i'm buying siri alexa is not responding this fast mostly cloudy partly cloudy okay to for the 13 other people that we have mm -hmm. Come on, guys! Client won't wait this much for Alexa just to tell uh, what is the weather like today. Let's see. You guys might have used Alexa, so how would you think uh, Alexa would reply to this message of the client? partly cloudy partly cloudy okay hi sir uh ma'am yeah ma'am i want to uh, ma'am when i open my discord ma'am mm -hmm. i am not able to see uh, any of these messages Okay, on the left side, uh, can you see any of the channels, Swarali? Yes, ma'am. Uh, there are training LPS and announcement. Ma'am, when uh -huh. I uh, click on training, ma'am, uh, it is again and again going to announcement. Okay, might be a glitch. Can you just try? Uh, you are on laptop, right? No, ma'am. I'm using phone. Phone. Can you just try quitting Discord once, like remove it from your recent tab and try it once again? Ma'am, uh, in the morning, ma'am, uh, Hamza, ma'am had tagged me in that uh, co-pilot one uh, message, mm -hmm. but uh, I'm always going to that message only. Okay, okay. Do one thing. Just close it fully, like remove it from your recent tabs. Open it once again. I think it's just taking the recent history. Okay. Try it once. Close it fully and then try opening. Mm -hmm. Weather is partly cloudy today. Yeah. maybe alexa might respond in a full sentence like the weather is partly cloudy today but yes sort of that is how alexa would try to respond okay let me give you another question let's be a little bit quicker guys um, being the last session let's have a little bit more energy than the previous one so alexa can you predict the future if i ask this question to alexa what do you think uh, it would respond what do you think how would the conversation between me and you being an alexa go
I would like to, but I'm not an astrologer. Okay. Okay. I can suggest a few. Okay. What about others? What do you think? Uh, if I ask Alexa, Alexa, can you predict the future? What would be the response I'd be getting from Alexa? Can Alexa tell me? Yes, Mamta, you will have an amazing weekend ahead. Or what would it respond? No results found. OK. Yes, Sanjana has something to say. Go ahead, go ahead. Anything else? Apart from I would like to, but I'm not an astrologer. I can suggest a few and no results found. OK, third one. If I ask Alexa, Alexa, can you play some music for me? What would Alexa respond to that? Which type of music you want to listen? Yes, I can play the song. What songs are you into? Uh huh. Which song you want to listen? Yes, which song you want me to play? Playing one of your favorite songs. I'm I am reading every single comment of you in Alexa's voice. Great. So yes, Alexa might respond uh, to my question being, can you play some music for me, Alexa, in one of your options? Now, if I ask Alexa, a couple more. Uh, if I ask Alexa, Alexa, what is the capital of France? What would Alexa respond to me? Alexa, what is the capital of France? Paris is the capital of France. Paris is the capital of France. Here is the answer to your question. Paris is the capital of France. Paris is the capital of France. All right. So as most of you answered, one with uh, something different, like here is the answer to your question. Paris is the capital of France. Just one last, one last topic of conversation. So Alexa, what is the winning lottery number for tonight? If I ask Alexa this question, what do you think Alexa will respond? Alexa, what is the winning lottery number for tonight? What do you think, guys? What will Alexa respond to my question being Alexa? What is the winning lottery number for tonight? Um, 
predict a certain number okay but is that number accurate if it predicts is that number accurate if it predicts let's say seven how sure are we that uh, seven will be uh, you know the uh, lottery number the winning lottery number to be very specific using regression or decision tree okay results not found okay if someone has Alexa in their home, try it once. Ask Alexa, Alexa, what is the winning lottery number for tonight? Uh, you can just listen to what Alexa is trying to say. So now that we have had this quiz, now, okay, we discussed about, you know, this thing, conversational AI being uh, this thing. A, con a, a, a couple of words, when you combine together, it just means communication with the machine. But now that we had this particular activity, and now you were actually thinking what to respond, how to respond, what are the inputs given. Now, can you try giving me the answer to the same question? What is conversational AI in a little bit more depth? Yes, communication with machine, yes, of course. Uh, not wrong at all. But can you give me an in-depth uh, explanation of how exactly is the computer or a machine responding to the inputs given by you? So can you basically describe conversational AI in a little more depth for me now that you are Alexa for the past uh, five minutes can you try explaining me what is conversational AI a little bit more in depth yes anybody if you want I would suggest you to unmute yourself and try because writing an answer this big would take a lot of time so anyone can you explain me conversational AI can you give me a, a explanation on conversational AI a little bit more in depth apart from uh, humans communication communicating with machines how exactly is that happening is what I'm asking anyone what is conversational AI guys come on okay Aishwarya is right okay you're writing on discord okay all right this assistant can understand natural language okay all right anyone else anyone else would want to add something into what aishwarya just said aishwarya says conversational ai is an assistant that can understand natural language anybody else wants to add something or give for different explanation of their own yeah it is the way of connect it is the way of connection between machines and human mm -hmm. it is a way of connection or a way of connecting between the machines and humans okay Swarali was saying something yeah conversational ai uh ma'am it uh ma'am it reads the past uh past questions and then it tries to answer people uh it it also uses machine learning yet uh, that models like uh, decision making tree and regression and all. Correct. So Sakshi says take voice instructions and search into the database for results and then respond. Cool. Mm -hmm. So if you mix all of your answers, no uh, uh, connection between machines and humans, uh, then uh, taking voice inputs and researching into the database, an assistant that can understand natural language and uh, usage of uh, artificial intelligence, decision tree and decision making algorithm so yes if you combine all of them conversational AI refers to the use of artificial intelligence and natural language processing to create chatbots or virtual assistants that can help engage in human like conversations the exact thing that we were doing right now unlike traditional chatbots which rely on a predefined set of responses conversational AI have a uh, advantage that they can understand and respond to natural language inputs making them more interactive it's not that if you want to ask alexa uh, you know what is the weather outside you have to say what is the weather outside a compulsory five words no so that is the advantages of having chatbots so it is the interaction between people with machine which helps in reduce work yes so it is basically the usage of ai now we were doing with alexa right so one popular example of ai another one is siri and apple's virtual assistant that can respond to voice commands and perform various tasks the same way Alexa does. Now what do you think? What are some of the benefits of using conversational AI in let's say business and customer service? 
you might have heard of business and customer services right so think of um, some benefits of using this conversational ai in business and customer service let's say you own your small business we have heard of small businesses a lot on instagram right so think of it if they have uh, you know conversational ai chatbot voice bots in their business how would they how would it help it how would it help enhance the business what do you think having conversational ai in yeah they say instead of human we can use machine for the so what would be the benefits yes you can use machines for taking orders and also what would be the benefits coming out of it it will work faster than humans it will work faster than humans one of them okay second thing human might not be available 24/7 no right uh, let's say customer has a query isn't it you can't wake up at 2 a.m. and because someone has called you you can't wake up at 2 a.m. and reply to their query so you can have a chatbot for engaging uh, for increasing the customer engagement reduce the response times isn't it and provide personalized experiences the same way humans do by automating routine tasks and answering common queries faqs are there frequently asked questions so you can actually i uh, try to put it in your conversational layer so all the frequently asked common queries will be answered by you know your chat bots your conversational layer rather than you repeating the same things again and again uh, ai can also free up human agents to focus more on complex tasks and improve the overall efficiency right so if in case uh, we sum up conversational layer so conversational layer would be all these uh, voice assistants and chatbots basically uh, referring to the use of ai and nlp is to create both of them right so that is what exactly a chatbot is now there are some various characteristics of chatbot of conversational ai that we may or may not have looked into in detail so if we think of uh, every single character one of them is a very important part nlp or the natural language processing Conversational AI systems have the ability to process and understand natural language input from the users, enabling uh, them to have human-like conversations the exact same way we were having. Personalization: it can provide personalized experience to the users by utilizing data. As uh, some of you said, it can go to the database, so it can go to the user history and then uh, offer relevant responses. Then we have engagement. So engagement over here uh, can be designed. Uh, Uh, can be referred in terms of ai being designed to proactively engage uh, engage with users based on certain triggers or event such as if the user wants something personalized so you know so offering personalized product recommendations or providing customer service assistance reducing the response time is what we call as engagement basically engaging the user so that they do not feel uh, left out or they do not feel like oh this is taking so much of time so i better not uh, go into that and last but not the least continuous learning conversational ai systems can continuously learn and improve based on user interactions and feedback so allowing them to adapt to changing user needs and preferences not every chatbot not every conversational ai conversation will be the same right like how you guys were answering me in a different manner so i can talk to you guys in a different manner so it can learn from uh, the various inputs given by the user so these are all the characteristics of conversational ai now what i want you to do is i have a certain assessment for you so let's say i want you to design a chatbot for a travel agency for improving the customer service experience of an online retailer using conversational ai so it's like uh, this uh, uh, online uh, online retailer person no the travel agency guy he is facing some issues like maybe the users are not really uh, registering for the travel agency or something is not working so what i want you to do is design a chatbot or at least give some suggestions on how can we improve the customer service experience of the chatbot for this particular travel agency so what can you think of what can we actually put in to practice for the chatbot that can improve the customer service experience for the travel agency company think of it if you were supposed to create a chatbot what would be the different uh, things you would add into it without fail mm -hmm. this is a small part of assessment that you will have to do right now 
So maybe take a pen and book if you want to note down the important points that, uh, let's say you are a customer, okay, and I am the travel agency guy. So you came to my website and you were not really satisfied with the customer service provided by me. So what would have been your expectations? So put that into the chatbot that you are designing. Go ahead. Take five minutes of your time and try to create uh, some ideas, try to design some ideas that you would put into the chatbot. And if you have any that you want to tell me, so you can maybe put it in the chat if you want, or you can unmute yourself and tell me. Any suggestions so far? What can we put into the designing of the chatbot to improve the customer service? Also, yes, you can put it in the chat over here only mm -hmm. rather than putting it on Discord. Put it in the chat, it will be fine. Yes, guys, anyone? At least one suggestion that you can. Tell me what can uh, the chatbot do? How can you make it better? If you go ahead and try to book a flight or something, what are you expecting from a travel agency? Chatbot. Ma'am. Yes, Varali. Ma'am, uh, what is the question? Uh, because, ma'am, is it that the customer is facing some problem? Or is it the customer wants to uh, con uh, con converse with the... Uh, no, let's say, let's say you are a uh, travel agency person, okay? and you, are th you, know, you already have a chatbot. But currently, what is happening is the customers are not really satisfied with the customer service provided by your chatbot. So what different things can you do? What different uh, you know new uh, things can you bring up in your chatbot so that uh, the people are really satisfied? And there is customer uh, customer satisfaction out of the conversations happening with the chatbot. So what do you think? What can the chatbot offer more? You might have heard of so many chatbots. Like you go on any website, there is this small thing at the bottom right that will pop up and be like, hi, how can I help you and all of that. So how yes. can a chatbot in travel agency can be made better? What new things can we bring up? Ma'am, the chatbot, ma'am, first we can uh, first we can greet them, then we can make sure that uh, we can understand what the customer's issue are. Mm -hmm. And uh, then, ma'am, we can, uh, ma'am, there are coupons now, coupons and vouchers we get. Yeah. So we can, uh, ma'am, according to their issue or according to what the amendments we have to make, ma'am, we can give them the coupons and ask them to visit the nearest, uh, nearest store, uh, nearest uh, agency. Mm -hmm. And then we can offer them discounts and all, so that uh, customer can also be satisfied, and uh, and uh, our website will also get popularized and somewhat. Cool. So giving discounts on the flights or basically the travels they book is one of the things. Cool. Greeting them, understanding their requirement, understanding what the user wants. So when you uh, say about that understanding, I remembered one point. So when you say understanding, so let's say user wants to take a flight at, let's say, 12 p.m. and then reach to the destination at, let's say, 3 p.m. So we can recommend flights and we can personalize their what uh, plans, their travel plans. We can also recommend them hotels based on the customer's budget. Currently, what happens? Yes, the, the apps, they uh, you know recommend you the hotels and all, but they do not take into consideration customer's budget. 
So your chatbot can have hotel recommendation based on the budgets and the travel dates and the preferred destination and so many. In additional point, you can also provide them, uh, you know, information about travel visas, the vaccinations now that uh, uh, pandemic happened. So these uh, few things you can put in the chatbot to increase the customer satisfaction and common customer queries issues such as let's say tracking anything requesting refunds resolving product related queries so if we try putting all of these things in a chatbot for example for a travel agency the customer service would really improve so anybody else do we have any more suggestions coming from you apart from surali anyone else wants to add in some more points that can help make this chatbot more uh, successful No? OK. So there are different fields where conversational AI is used, actually. So I'll just name the fields for you. Let's see if you actually have uh, visited any of these and maybe have used any of these. So first one is customer service. Uh, I'll go for customer service. Let's uh, The others will go for you guys. So conversational AI is increasingly being used in customer service and support, providing that 24-7 assistance to customers through your chatbots, virtual assistants. Because this is the easiest one, the uh, customer service. You go anywhere, you go on any e-commerce website and you ask them, where is my order? They'll be uh, able to reply you within seconds. Like response time is really low. What about healthcare? How is conversational AI being used in healthcare, guys? Anybody? How is conversational AI? How will these um, chatbots, etc virtual assistants be used in healthcare? What do you think? Anyone? You might have used it also. Uh, Ma'am, recently uh, Google's AI eye doctor have also launched, no? Yeah. So what uh, have you heard of it? Ma'am, it can uh, identify the condition of uh, diabetic retinopathy. Yeah. And then it can give you the different uh, hospitals nearby, you know, that can actually cure it. The best eye surgeons around us. Exactly. So it will just tell, OK, you are in uh, XYZ area. So what are the hospitals that are treating uh, your, uh, you know, injury or your area of inconvenience? So that is when it is used in <clears throat> healthcare. Sorry. So chatbots and virtual assistants can be used to answer common medical queries provide health monitoring and offer personalized health recommendations as well, right? Second one is education. How is conversational AI used in education? You might have used it during the lockdown period. So how can it be used in education, guys? Yes, Varali. Ma'am, nowadays we are wanting to uh, get our education abroad. So, mm -hmm. ma'am, uh, we can visit that sites and there they uh, the chatbot they respond to us ki which website is good and if you want ki then uh, upgrade we can also contact upgrade and other uh, agencies like that. Yeah, you can also go on to some university websites. They'll have the chatbots and they'll respond to you. You know what are the documents required to get into this university? What is the criteria? Cutoff marks and all of that. Cool. Retail and e-commerce, we know uh, chatbots and virtual assistants can or uh, provide uh, can uh, provide uh, those recommendations on whatever you are buying, handling customer query, uh, customer queries and complaints, etc. That goes on for e-commerce every single day. All of you might have bought something or the other and then have had to either get a refund or return it or something. So at some point of the time, you might have to go with. Uh, AI used in retail and fine, uh, this thing, e-commerce. Last but not the least, finance. So has anybody over here worked with any chatbot in finance field? Because this is a term which usually uh, people with uh, high age use. So finance, conversational AI is used in finance industry to provide uh, personalized finance advice and assist with financial planning. So in finance also, it is gaining a lot of uh, you know interest from the people because finance is something that most of the people might not understand. You know, it's practically not possible for all of us to understand finance. So AI in finance is help, uh, helping a lot, conversational AI in finance. All right. 
So before you go on to a small break, I just have a quiz for all of you guys. So the same things, I'll be putting the questions on our Discord channel. There will be three to four options. There will be three options. So what I want you to do is answer in A, B, or C format. All right. So let's go. The same, guys, uh, training session LPF. So I'll be pasting on my first question over there. So there we go. What is conversational AI? Now, please pay attention to the wordplay done in any of the questions. So what is conversational AI? It's either A or B or C. I'm pretty sure it cannot be D. OK. You guys are telling me conversational AI is basically a type of artificial intelligence that allows computer to computers to understand and respond to natural language. All right. Which of uh, the following is an example as a well-known example of conversational AI? Siri, Facebook Messenger, we are uh, trying to chat with one another and not uh, the one with a machine. Cool. So Siri is what you guys have told me. Uh, third question. What do you think is a chat bot? What is a chat bot? See, so a chatbot is basically uh, a, an AI system that understands human speech and text. Okay, amazing. Uh, it could have been B and C, but if you see the more significance we have given to C, because a chatbot is not just for customer support, it can be for any number of things. Cool. Both one. Which of the following is not a potential use case for conversational AI? Amongst the ones that I have given, which of the following is not a use case? B, healthcare, agriculture, and yeah. Because uh, when you say agriculture, it is most of uh, it is mostly like going to the field part and actually trying to you know do physical stuff basically. So conversationally, I may or might not help in on a large extent. Mm -hmm. One more. Let me just share one more. What is uh, eventually the goal of conversational AI? What is the goal of conversational AI? To create machines that can converse uh, with humans in a natural way. Cool. The second option to create machine that can perform complex calculation does not come under conversational AI. It just comes under AI. To create machine that can learn from experience is again a part of AI and ML and not conversational AI. So I hope the topic of conversational AI is clear. When we talk about uh, us being basically communicating with a machine is what is called as a conversational AI. Amazing. Even after some wordplay through the uh, questions, this time, all the answers were pretty correct. OK. So let's just go ahead and take a 10 minute break. Now, just before going to a break, I will just be sharing the attendance sheet with you guys so that um, you can just fill up the form while drinking water. Uh, the others, the review things and all, I'll be sharing it later. Uh, in the second half of it, just give me a second. So, there you go. I'm putting it in the chat. Uh, please do go ahead and fill the link. Uh, just give me a second. I will just try to. One second, guys. I'll just try to give you the line number from where you can start filling up. One second. Yeah. 
So can we start at 105? 105 should be good to start off with. So guys, fill up the form. It's 556. Let's be back by 65. Uh, let's be back by 65. Fill up the form, uh, the attendance form. Get some water. Yes, Nyaneshwari, tell me. You want to say something? No, okay, all right. Okay, so not an issue. So take off uh, around five to ten minutes break. Let's be back by six five, everyone. Okay, so drink some water, fill in the form, and let's be back.
Guys, are we back? Can you hear me? Is everyone back from the break? Uh, I need to share a link, that's why. And how come 13 people only, 21, 22, 23, 24, 24, 26, any of you have mm -hmm. not yet filled the free, uh, this thing, attendance sheet, is it? I can see Aishwarya, Komal, Pallavi, Swarali, Sanjana, Samruddhi, Yaneshwari, Tanushri, Navya, Sakshi, Gargi, Vaishnavi, and Samruddhi. If any one of you have not yet filled it, no, please try filling it because I think the number is less than the number of us actually present in the session. Okay. So is everyone back? Yes. Okay. Others, are you back? I need to share an important link with you guys. Are we back? Okay. So uh, what I want every single person over here to do is open this link. Uh, when you click on this link, it will open you open in a new tab. OK. So first of all, this is uh, taking feedback from you guys. This is about how, uh, what was your experience with the wisely wise. So whenever you click on any of the stars, uh, uh, rate it uh, with respect to stars, you, will, you should be able to uh, do a Google login. All right. So then once you do a Google login, you should be able to just write a small paragraph about how was your experience throughout uh, with Wisely Wise. And you can just then click on Submit. So everyone, uh, just please open this in a new tab and try to fill up. So first of all, rate the stars. As soon as you rate the stars, uh, you might be asked to log in, log in with your Google. And then uh, what made your experience great? Uh, or what did the company do well? Be honest, helpful, and constructive. And date of experience, you can write it for today. So just take a couple of minutes and try to fill in. Uh, once you have filled it, do let me know. Yeah. Okay, people are filling the okay, attendance. So fill up the attendance form and then fill up uh, this link as well. Let me know once you guys are done so that we can proceed. Okay, thank you so much. This link is not working. Now we open this once again. When you click mm -hmm. on it, it should ask you, first of all, the stars. Once you are done filling with the stars, it will ask you to log in. Yes, OK. OK, not an issue now. Yeah, that's OK. Others, let me know once you are done. Mm -hmm. Let's be a little bit quicker on that. Once you're done filling in uh, with the feedback on your link, uh, let me know. Attendance link, sure.
Uh, there you go, Gayatri. This one is the attendance link. And you're welcome. And the previous one is the review link. Is everybody done with filling up the review link? All of you guys? OK. OK, all right. If seems like everyone is done. So if everyone is done, then let's just proceed. Let's have a quick look at our lesson two for today, AI in robotics. We'll just have a, a quick understanding of how AI is used in robotics. But before I start off, uh, we have seen so many people talking about robot, robot, and robot. So what is a robot according to you? What is a robot? What do you understand by the word robot? Because when I'm saying robot, I'm pretty sure you are trying to imagine something. So what is it that you are imagining? What is a robot for you? Anyone? Is it a human? Is it a water bottle? Is a, is a cell phone a robot? What? What is a robot? It is a program. It is a program. OK. And does it have any physical structure? Does your program have any physical structure? Yes, it yeah. can or it may not. It may, OK. It can have, or even if it doesn't have, it's fine. OK. Anybody else wants to add something into what Nashra just said? What is it about? A body which can do anything we want or we order. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So a program that is basically fit into a body. So robots, we can say, are machines that can perform tasks, as you said, whatever we order, give order to the a machine. So that can perform tasks autonomously. Yes, it gives like a human moments, and it functions automatically. Exactly. It might mm -hmm. also look like a human. You might have seen some robots. Like uh, I'm not sure if you have heard of Sophia. Sophia is a robot. I am not exactly sure which country she's in. It is a machine that takes instructions. Yeah. So we might have heard of Sophia. Like Alexa and Siri are, uh, we are not really, they are not really visible to us. So uh, conversational AI. Over here, we are talking about robots. So robot is machines that can perform tasks autonomously or semi autonomously, uh, very often designed to resemble humans or animals. One example I can give is Sophia. One example that I, the, that we saw at the very start, mm -hmm. the artist one. They can be programmed to perform a variety of functions. And most commonly, they are used in manufacturing. They are used in healthcare. Then they are also used in uh, military applications, etc. Some robots are operated remotely by humans, whereas uh, others are fully autonomous and can operate without any human intervention. Many of you might have seen the movie Robot, in which we have Rajnikan. So autonomous robot you know, can operate uh, without any human intervention. Robots typically consist of various components, sensors, actuators, a CPU, which will enable them to move, process information. The capabilities of robots have actually increased very dramatically over the past few years with advancement in AI and machine learning, allowing them to perform uh, increasingly complex tasks. What is robotics, on the other hand? The field that studies. I mean, a field of study that focuses on the design, development, and operation of the robots, right? So that is a field of study. So now that we know what is a robot, we have also had a look on uh, what is AI. What is the job of AI versus what is the job of robot? Or basically, how do you think AI and robots are linked? How is AI linked with robots? What do you think? How are both these concepts linked? Because whenever we think of AI, some point of the time, you might also think of the word robots. So how do you think AI and robots are related to each other? You guys give me an, uh, a definition for robot. Like it's a machine. It's a replica of human. So now how is AI related with that machine, with that replica of human, or with the body that can do anything you want, or with the program? What do you think? Mm -hmm. Anyone, how is AI uh, linked with robotics, robots? Mm -hmm. 
मैम रोबोटिक इन्वॉल्व दी क्रिएशन ऑफ रोबोट टू परफॉर्म टास्क एंड ए आई इज हाउ द सिस्टम इम्यूलेटेड द्यूमन माइंड लाइक मेक डिसीजन और लर्न समथिंग एक्सैक्टली तो ए आई इज लाइक आर्टिफिशियल इंटेलिजेंस एंड रोबोटिक्स बोथ ऑफ दीज टर्म्स आर वेरी क्लोजली रिलेटेड बोथ ऑफ दीज आर क्लोजली रिलेटेड फील्ड they are very often used in combination to create advanced machine with higher capabilities when you say robotics robotics involves the design the development mm-hmm. and uh, operation of machines that can perform tasks ai on the other hand involves creation of these intelligent machine that learn from data and reason about information so as you said making the decisions and all that is taken care by ai robots is basically uh, uh, involving designing and development and the operation of the machine the cpu that is the brain of the robotics still has ai so that's great that is how ai is linked with the term robotics ai is used in robotics in uh, you know like various manners like first of all is object detection ai algorithms can be used to train these robots to recognize objects and classify them according to their characteristics it is used in manufacturing and logistics where robots uh, need to be able to identify and sort the different types of products so you see these robots which have been created they have to be trained and uh, they have to be trained on the ai algorithm so ai and robotics being linked together path planning is another way like ai algorithms can be used to enable robots to navigate through complex environments and avoid obstacles self learning uh, self driven cars this is useful in applications such as autonomous vehicles then we also have drones where the robots actually need to be able to plan its route to avoid collision many of the times you have seen we uh, like uh, use that drone through remote control semi autonomous but there are autonomous robots also like if they are uh, if it's a self driving car you do not control it with a robot right so that has to take care of its own autonomous fully autonomous so ai algorithms can be used to enable robots to navigate through these environment and complex environment and in order to avoid obstacles then we also have nlp natural language processing ai algorithms can be used to enable robots to understand and respond to natural language commands uh, imagine just imagine you are meeting sophie and you are actually having a conversation with that robot so that is nothing but the robots being trained on ai algorithms for natural language processing also in home automation personal assistants where user can interact with the robots using voice command is yet another usage of ai in robotics last but not the least medical robotics ai can be used to enable uh, ro- uh, robots to perform medical procedures and surgeries as well yes you are listening to me really correctly uh, in a world where um, we actually see doctors performing the surgery with greater accuracy now we have robots who have been trained on ai algorithms that actually perform surgeries and medical procedures with the highest precision and accuracy possible this is useful in applications such as invasive surgery and robot assisted surgeries in a few years we should be able to see you know like uh, you will be going to a hospital and you will be able to see a robot being an assistant over there so just don't get uh, surprised you have heard of it today from me so these are the various ways ai is used in robotics so i think the robotics chapter was pretty small enough before we go to the capstone projects uh, what i want to ask is we have covered all the theoretical part uh, right from uh, regression artificial intelligence machine learning whatever things we had started with So the last thing we uh, covered was robots and AI used in robotics. So guys, any doubts so far before we start off with the last session of the course, the two capstone projects that we'll be looking at? Any doubts? A yes or no would be a good to go. All of you present. Any doubts so far uh, in the things we have covered? No, Swarali says no. What about others? anything that is still unclear in your mind so that is just giving a no for the entire batch is it no okay all right cool so okay so in our uh, the last lesson uh, lesson for today capstone projects we'll just have a look at the two capstone projects that were given 
so mm. i will just try to open up the capstone mm. projects along with the data sets and what was the agenda for them so if you have gone through it no oh, this one if you have gone uh, if you have gone through uh, the thing the capstone project there were two capstone projects one of them was image classification with the help of a fruit data set and the second one was linear regression with the uh, height and weight data set. Oh, what is happening? Yeah, mm -hmm. let it open. It, collab might take a couple mm -hmm. of minutes. So let me first show you the data set. Mm -hmm. So we had given you a data set that you had to go download mm -hmm. and then use it. So first of all, let me just show you that. So the data set was about uh, fruits, uh, fruit.csv. CSV, again, if you remember from the previous session, CSV is a comma separated file. Uh, we did linear regression the last time, and logistics was given as a part of homework. So, in linear regression, uh, mm -hmm. I hope you guys remember what was linear regression. So, over here, we are just trying to do a fruit classification. What we will try to do is we'll try to create a model of logistic regression, the one that was given in homework. Uh, logistic regression and linear regression, there were two different things. If you guys remember, logistics regression was about uh, telling me if an output uh, was an, a, a value, a single value, either a yes or no. So that is what we will try to do over here. So if you have a look at the data set given, I have some inputs and I have just one column for the output, Apple, mandarin apple orange lemon these are all the fruits that i have so this model if i give all of these inputs so if you go towards uh, the last chapter of capstone so you might have all of these inputs uh it, this one is the uh weight and height this one is the weight this one is the height and we have different different columns resembling the different inputs for the given output being apple, mandarin, lemon, orange, etc. So for this, we had to create a logistic regression model. So let's have a look at the capstone project. First of all, it has import pandas as PD. Can somebody remind me why do we use the library called pandas? What was the use of uh, this pandas library? Anyone? We have used this a couple of times in the previous session. So if anyone remembers the usage of that. Why do we use pandas? No one remembers, OK. So pandas is a library to read any CSV file. This is an external file, right? I'll have to download this file in order to use it. So as soon as I download, now this is on my PC. So somehow I'll have to upload it from this folder part. So as soon as I click on the folder, same things, the one that we did earlier. There is an upload option. So we'll just go to fruit and upload it. So once you have uploaded, this becomes an external file that you have downloaded. So in order to read a CSV file, you need pandas library. So I've imported the pandas. Uh, this particular piece of code you need if you do not import it directly. How I clicked on the upload thing and um, or try to upload it directly. You can do that also. Or this is another way of doing it. You can use Google Collab and the dot upload method to upload the file. But if you upload it directly using that folder, no need to do that. Now, the first thing is I'll have to read the CSV file and store it in a variable. So I have chosen a variable data and PD, the pandas library that we imported as PD. I'm using the read underscore CSV method for that. What is the name uh, of the fruit dot, uh, what is the name of the file? It's fruit.csv. Please make sure that you have the correct uh, uh, name of the file. Header none, like there is no header present. Like if you see the CSV file over here, is there any header present? No, so header none and put the encoding as UTF-8. Google supports encoding as UTF-8 only. Then once this is done, if you want, we can just have a look at print data, data being the variable. Uh, first of all, run all the things. Run the first block and then the second block. Run it in sequence. 
So data being the variable, reading all the things inside fruit.csv, there you go. I have my data variable having all of these things. Now what I want to do is I want to separate. I want to separate the input and the output. So let me just comment this out so that it is not read. Now the next thing after reading the file is I have to extract the features and the labels, features being the input and label being the output. So what are the features? First column, second column, third column, fourth column, and fifth column. Or if you consider in terms of CSV, zeroth column, one column, two column, three column, and four column. You always have to start the indexing from zero. So we are taking the features using iLock. What was data again? The variable in which all the CSV data was present. I mean, all the data inside the CSV file was present. So you're like, go inside data, data doc, ILOC. ILOC is used to extract rows and columns from your mm -hmm. files. ILOC is a method used to extract rows and columns. So how many rows we want? We want all the rows, isn't it? For be it the features or be it the label, we want all the rows. So colon in Python means everything. So you are trying to extract all the rows mm -hmm. or every single row present in your CSV file. Versus how many columns we want? Zero column, one column, two column, three column, and four column. So we are saying everything till five. Now, what is the job of iLock? Why am I not saying everything till four? We want till four. No. Let me just comment over here. In iLock, you put the number of rows and you put the number of columns uh, plus one always. Like how many ever columns you want, you will put plus one of it. That is how the rule goes for ILO. So we want all the columns still four, but we put all the columns still five. So anyways, it is not taking five. It will take four. It's just that you have to write it for plus one. Over here also, everything means all the columns. So you're like all the columns until the fifth one, but it is not taking the fifth one. It is only taking the one with index four. Same with label. Rows, you want all of them, isn't it? But column, you want only the one, the last one, which is at index how much? Five. Uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So over here, we have put 5. Like you want the last one uh, in, in the uh, CSV file. Now, if you print it, let me just print it for you. If you just print it, I have first printed features. So there you go. These are all the features we are getting. Features until here. These are all the features, basically the inputs that you will be putting. And these are all the labels or basically the output. So it's like if you if I give these features, what will be the equivalent output? So features and label are the two variables we are looking at. All right. So if you run the code, I would suggest you to run all the codes one by one, block by block. Next, all you have to do is split the data as training and testing to evaluate the model. Usually the ratio taken is 80-20, like uh, 0 0.8 and 0 0.2. However, you can go to uh, 70 30 also for training just keep the maximum amount of data and for testing mm -hmm. just keep a let, little less so sk learn the library in python has a sub library called model selection from where we are importing train test split a train test split is used to split the given input and the output into uh, the size that is required by the user so it will be um split into four different parts x train x test x being the independent variable so x independent data for training x independent data for testing y is the dependent variable training and testing so x for training x for testing and y for training and y for testing it is uh, segregated into four different parts then you will use the train test split to tell it what is the input okay the input is present in the variable features. The output is present in the variable label. And what is the size? You can either give train size is equal to 0 0.8 or test size is equal to 0 0.2. It's one and the same, won't really matter. I have given test size being 0 0.2. So ultimately, the training size would be 0 0.8, which is 80% of it. So over here, if you run the code, you will see that it will give you a tick that is yes, like this was successful. If you want, you can print the data also. So over here, if I print x train, let's just have a look. Sorry, not z train, but x train. Let's just have a look at how many data points do we have in x train. You see, these many data points are present in x train. Now, if you just do an x test, you know, you will see, you will be able to see it visually that the number of data points will be less than testing. Because 
see avalo because 80 percent is going in training right so any of these training be it x train or y train will have more data than the testing part once this is done now we used to build the uh, model using ai algorithm so you import the logistic regression you create the model of logistic regression and you fit it with the training data because the model is to be trained first. So X train and Y train are the two data sets we have that we are uh, training our model with. Once done, you can just run this part also. It will show like, yeah, training is done and all of that. These are just warnings. Even if you do not look at them, it's fine. Don't look at warnings until and unless it's errors, just seeing. Then last but not the least, you have to evaluate and predict the model. So evaluate with a score, like how much is the prediction score or how much is the accuracy score. Accuracy is how close is the predicted output to the actual output. All right. So over here, the, my model is giving me an accuracy of around. You can just do a runtime and you know, initially it was giving a 91%. 91%. So 91.66 is an amazing score. Anything beyond 80 for a model is really amazing. Then all you have to do is you can just try to predict it. So predict it by giving it the required input. So this one is one, 180, then there is 6.8, and there is 0 0.9. So it is showing Apple. It is showing the first one. I've checked it for the first one. Uh, let's check it for this one, Mandarin. So let's try to put all the input values with respect to Mandarin. So it's two comma seventy, sorry, seventy six comma five point eight is the height. Then we have four, and then we have zero point eight one. Oh, where am I writing? Okay, again. So we have two comma seventy six comma five point eight, then four, then zero point eight one. And I made a small mistake over here. And let's see. Let you show that it is Mandarin. Uh, let's do a runtime run all. Unexpected EOF while passing. Did I do something wrong? Hold on. Let's see. Oh, one uh, extra round bracket was removed. Sorry, my bad. Two seventy six five point eight four zero point eight one. Let's see. Mandarin. So in a similar way, if you go to different pages and then you know you try to check if any of these is orange or lemon, it should predict. So this one was the first capstone project classification of fruits using the fruit data set. These data sets, you can find it anywhere. You can also have a look at the platform called Kaggle. Like this one was uh, one of the data sets called Fruit360. So you can find as many data sets as you want and train your model using that. So mm -hmm. That was the first capstone project. So guys, is the capstone, uh, this first one clear? Are we clear with image classification using Fruit data set? Is, is it clear, guys? Image class is the first project of the capstone. Uh, yes or no would be good to go. Guys, right. do we have any doubts with the uh, first capstone project that is image classification using fruit data mm -hmm. set? Okay, I'm assuming then your print of silence is a yes if none of you is ready to answer. So let me just close this part and let's have a look at the second capstone project. Second capstone project was pretty simple. It was about linear regression. So let me just open it. Linear regression for the height and weight data set. It's like if I give this weight, it should predict what is my height and vice versa is also possible. Mm -hmm. If you give this height, then what mm -hmm. is the weight? So let's have a look at the database. I mean, the data set for this. 
So this was the data set, the data set too. So if the weight is 28, the height is supposed to be 121. If the weight is, let's say, 40, the height is supposed to be 142. So again, the same thing. The first thing we are doing is importing pandas, reading the file. Once you are reading the file you want, you can do a printing of the variable in which uh, your data is there. So for me, it is weight and height present. And let's just download it once. So download the data set. Put it into the folder. Upload. Data set 2 is the name. Cool. I have my uh, CSV file over here. So the first thing I'm doing is reading the CSV file named dataset2.csv. You want, you can print it. After you print the variable, uh, you will get all the data. Again, the same thing. You'll have to segregate. No, You'll have to be like, height I have to keep different and weight I have to keep different. So I've taken two more variables, weight and height. So for height, what I'm doing is I'm going inside that variable, df, in which all my data is present. And then I'm going inside the column of height. And then I'm converting it to a list. What happens when you say to a list, uh, when you say to list, that entire column is, that entire vertical column is converted to a horizontal list like this, as you can see. So this particular list or a container is containing only the height values. And the second container is containing only the weight values. Now you have segregated all the things, all the uh, two things uh, required for this particular code. You have segregated the height and the height variable. You have separated the weight and the weight variable. Now what you have to do is you have to perform linear regression. So when you say linear, linear means a straight line. A straight line has an equation of y is equal to mx plus c. Now let me just break down these terms for you. y is the output. Uh -huh. x is the input. You might have heard of this equation, y is equal to mx plus c. Can somebody tell me what is m in this particular equation? Uh, equation of straight line, y is equal to mx plus c. y is the output, x is the input. Very good. m is the slope. And what about uh, c? c is? Anyone? Constant. Sorry? It is a constant. It is a constant, yes. Or it is the mm -hmm. y-intercept also, meaning uh, the uh, the point at which your line is intercepting the y-axis, so y-intercept, right? So this same equation, y is equal to mx plus c, we have used here. It's just that every time we have different output, right? y is different. Every time we have different inputs, like if my input is 28, output is changing. If my input is 44.9, output is changing. So we can't just say y is equal to mx plus c just once. So we kept it in a for loop. A looping is basically doing things more than mm -hmm. one uh, time. So you're like for x in height. You're like for how many ever values are there in height, you have to do this thing, y is equal to mx plus c equation those many times. So there you go, y is equal to mx plus c. But y being a variable won't be able to store so many values. No, this being in a for loop, this will run more than once, of course. So y value being a variable won't be able to store it store so many values so that is why we created yet another list or we created yet another empty container and we have put or appended the uh, y value inside this empty container it's basically you took y is equal to mx plus c one output you put it into uh, this empty container y you took another y value you put it into y so that is what this entire list is storing so if i just give you a visual representation y as a list will have y value 1 comma y value 2 comma y value 3 and so on up to n number like how many ever heights and weights we have so this particular for loop is trying to train your model like for this input this should be the output for this input this should be the output given the fact that you have so many inputs and so many outputs now, if you try to predict, so let's say the input I'm giving is 193. We are talking about height, OK? Over here, we are giving the input as height and predicting the weight because for loop was uh, ran over the height. No, so height was what the model was trained on, and the output was weight. You want to even do vice versa also. That is not an issue. 
So if the height was 193, the weight went up to 89. Let's try it for this. Let's try it for height 142.24. Let's go here. 142. Let's do a runtime run all. So it is 40.89. So 142.24. There you go. 40. It won't, it might not be exactly correct, but if you see it is very much close. 40.89 and 40 is very much close. Let's try it for another one. Let's try it for 177.8. So if the height is a 177.8 and if I do a runtime run all, it should be around 74. It, it is 75.0 if you see. And 74.8 is approximately 75. So this is what is linear regression. You know, it is predicting uh, the output based on your single input. Uh, please keep a note over here. Linear regression usually has a single input like it has over here. That is yet another capstone project, guys. So have a look at the code or have a look at this part. And let me know. And yes, if I miss this, uh, polyfit is a, a method of NumPy uh, that helps you to choose the value of MNC. You cannot decide. I mean, you can, but it will take a lot of time to decide the slope of the line. When I say slope, you will be like, if this is the line, if this is the line. You see, there are different varieties of slopes available. And so mm -hmm. is the y-intercept C. So polyfit is a method given by NumPy that will automatically select the um, slope and the y-intercept based on your inputs and outputs, height and weight. And since it is linear regression, you will see the degree given is 1. So any doubts, guys, with this particular code of linear regression right from the start to the end, please let me know right away. Any doubts? with the second capstone project of us. No, OK. Others, any? No, OK. OK, all right. So that was about, uh, uh, about uh, the capstone projects that we had the two of us two of them now if we just try to summarize the things that we have done today we were actually able to do um we were actually able to understand conversational ai then we also had a look at robotics robots and we also had a look at ai being used in robots we did a few quizzes available and lastly we were able to uh, cover the two capstone projects now, before we proceed, let me just share with you the batch for today. I'll just share the link. This is the last batch for uh, this particular series. So I'll share the link with you. Please let me know if it is accessible, guys. It is in, I'm sharing this with you in training sessions.lpf. The AI Alchemist is the batch that we have uh, gotten today for the last session. Please let me know if it is accessible. Is it accessible, guys? Have a look. It should be in Discord. Yeah, OK. Mm -hmm. So you can just download it and keep it. This will be the last batch for the basics of AI session. Now, before we actually uh, go, let me just have a quick homework. This is the last homework again. So what I want you to do is critique the conversational AI of a virtual assistant, any of them. You can choose Siri or Alexa, whichever you have. <laughs> what I want you to do is I want you to interact no, with it. Other. I want you to, in Anusha, you are uh, on this thing. You can just mute yourself. All right. So what I want you to do is I want you to interact with Siri or Alexa or any virtual assistant if you have, apart from these two. At least for 15 minutes, try to check their response. When I say interact, you can ask it the same questions also and see if there is any change you know, in uh, the answers given by your virtual assistant. So what I want you to do is note it down and pay attention to how well your, the assistant understands your queries and how well it handles your follow-up question. 
what i want you to do is write a one page critique of the assistant's conversational ai including the strengths and weaknesses and make suggestions on how it could be improved so uh, this particular project is not involving any code part so you can just have uh, you know a one page report on how well uh, your virtual assistant is handling your follow up queries and all all right so i'll post this in discord also mm -hmm. just in case if somebody has missed this and then yeah you can uh, quickly try to submit it by monday if possible before 6 uh, pm mm -hmm. all right now before we go off i have mm -hmm. one more link to be shared in the chat there you go okay i've shared it twice that's mm -hmm. the feedback form for today before we sign off so all i want you to do is just go to that uh, particular link and try to fill it for the one last time Um, Ma'am, I wanted to ask till now, how many badges have you given? I have given four batches till now. Okay. Have you uh, got all of them? Yes, ma'am. I have all four of them. Ma'am, mm -hmm. I wanted to ask, ma'am, uh, what are we supposed to do of these badges? Uh, keep it downloaded. You might require it for the next uh, uh, this thing also. And that batch is just like sort of a milestone for you guys. Okay, ma'am. I thought we can also attach it in our resume and CV. You can attach the certificate, of course. Like after the session gets over, uh, uh, after the course gets over, you will get a certificate, right? So yes, that thing you can attach in the resume. You can actually mention it in there. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. All right. So I want you to fill up the feedback form. Do let me know once you have filled. Just take a quick one minute and uh, try to fill it, and then we'll do a quick wrap up. Wrap up. Done. Are we done filling up uh, with the feedback form, everyone? Yeah. Okay. Others? Okay, yes. Yes. Okay, all of you are done. Seems okay. Mamta, you want to also check with them if everybody has done the trust pilot review? Yeah, um, we did it just after the break. So I think. Uh, all of you, you remember I had shared the link with you wherein you were supposed to give the stars. So I have all of you done that. This particular link, if you want, just recheck it once. Okay. Kindly uh, click on the link and complete that review, girls, if you haven't. Oh, they say they have done it. Okay, all right. Everyone has done. Uh, Swarali, Komal, Sakshin, Sanjana, apart from you guys. Others? Just click on this link and recheck. If you have already given it, it will uh, say that your review is live and all. But if you haven't, just click on it and uh, try to do it. Yes, sir. Done. OK. Cool. Uh, everybody is done uh, with that uh, trust pilot. OK, great. Cool. So just one more thing we would like you to do, that is let's have some uh, live testimonials. Like what I want you to do is if uh, at least two of you, you decide who will be going first. If you can just uh, tell us how was your experience with Wisely Wise and throughout the five sessions. But for this, you will have to uh, switch on the camera so that we can also see you. We have never seen you, right? 
how is it fair that every session you guys should be able to see me but i am able to see literally like none of you so who is going first or should i pick any random one of you anyone what do you think should we pick uh, random like how our teachers used to do with us hamza ma'am what do you think yes girls come on anybody please volunteer and please do share your feedback the team is really working hard and has been working on each and every session so it will really mean a lot if um, at least some of you can share your testimonials or feedback All right. If you want to unmute, also you can just unmute yourself and share a few words. Hello, ma'am. Uh, I am Kumar Gulane, and the experience with Wisely Wise and this session is very well, and uh, it is very knowledgeable to me. to learn new things about ai and so i would like to thank you so much for that great komal thanks a lot for those words it really means a lot anyone else wants to go next i really want swarali to speak this time because she has been speaking throughout the whole session hello oh, ma'am hi there uh, i'm for joining this session uh, about artificial intelligence other than the full form of ai i didn't know anything but after i started this course uh, i realized it and uh, it also developed my interest in this field i have also planned to ms in artificial intelligence now uh Ma'am, uh, after listening the sessions, I really thought uh, I really think that these are really interesting, and I would like to thank you all, and a special thanks to you. <laughs> thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much, sir. I really it means a lot. It actually is, you know, really inspirational to see you finding what you like in a session because most of half of our life just goes in. uh finding the stuff that we like to be very honest uh, being an adult it it really means a lot when you say i have found what i like so thank you so much for being so uh, cooperative and attending all the sessions you were present literally all of them thank you so much for that ma'am till uh, till now all these 20 years i have been always jumping from one stone to another ki what should i do i'll become a doctor then i was thinking ki i'll do this i'll do that but uh, really thanks to you and ma'am also thanks to hamsa ma'am uh, she gave me the information about uh, co pilot so thank you most welcome sorali and i'm so glad all of you have attended the sessions thank you so much all right thanks guys for being so cooperative throughout uh, all the five sessions and even on discord for tolerating us and all the gifs and memes or uh, saying as hamza ma'am mentioned uh, that will still go on you know all the things that we have shared do have a look at them uh, it's not that uh, you will get cut off from the discord channel it will be there please do participate in anything that comes up on the discord channel as well all right so i, I think then we can wrap up All right, girls. Thank you so much. Thanks for all of you to take the time out. We're pretty late, and also in between your examination schedule. So fantastic to see the enthusiasm. Do let us know if you want more such sessions for the other course as well, and uh, we'll take it from there. So, having said that, um, thank you, and have a great weekend ahead. Take care. Bye bye. Thank you. Thanks, Mother. guys. Bye bye. Have a nice weekend ahead. No, Ma'am, I wanted to ask one. Yeah, tell us.
मैम दी नंबर विच इज देयर ऑन दी व्हाट्सएप ग्रुप ऑफ वाइजली वाइज मैम आई ट्राई टू कॉल इट बट देर वॉज नो रिस्पॉन्स फ्रॉम दी अदर साइड Okay, let me also check on that. So, Ali, did you leave any messages there? No, ma'am. I have not left any uh, message on the group. Okay. I think if you want um any response related to the course or any other queries, you can also reach out on Discord. Uh, we will be accessing that uh, regularly. In spite of this uh, particular session getting over, we'll still be very much active there. So. For all the girls, in fact, any of you want to reach out to us, you can uh, message us directly on Discord as well. No worries. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. You're welcome. Thank you so much, guys. Have a nice weekend ahead. Goodbye. Bye, everyone. Thank, Thank you, guys. It means a lot.